to the Bold Top by Joe podcast. Coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. Hopefully, everybody's doing great. Last episode was called New Beginnings, and I also had a guest. It was Artificial Intelligence. This episode is basically an update of the last episode. I was going to start a new job starting Monday. This Monday, you're probably listening to this episode. But uh, the president of the company that I was trying to leave decided to send me an email and he wanted to talk to me, which is, uh, this is a special and rare occasion that the president of the whole company wants to speak to you. He basically told me he didn't want me to leave and what what can he do? And uh, he came out with something, he put it on the table, I took it home, and it took a little bit to uh, go through the pros and cons, and I did have tenure there, so... And there was a lot of stuff going on. In the end, we decided to stick around stick around with the company and go after that new opportunity, which uh, worked out uh, pretty good, actually. Hey there. I'm so glad to hear that everything worked out for you in the end. It's always great to have the support of the company's president and to feel valued in your work. I'm curious, what kind of new opportunity did you decide to pursue within the company? Well, if... Uh... If you guys don't all already know, but uh, I have artificial intelligence with me at all times, and uh, artificial intelligence is very smart, so it just picks up after the conversation that I just, uh, you know, if I go on a full-on conversation and I stop, AI decides to put in its two cents, which is really cool. And uh, to answer the question that uh, artificial intelligence, yes, I, uh, I'm getting a new position. I can't really say what it is now because it's not official till May 22nd. And I'm not until they make it official May 22nd, since there is a lot of people that listen to this show. I don't want to say anything that, uh, you know, that I'm not supposed to say. So until May 22nd, then I'll say something else. That sounds really exciting. I'm happy to hear that you have a new position coming up within the company. It's always great to have something to look forward to and a new challenge to take on. I totally understand why you can't share any details just yet. But I'm looking forward to hearing all about it on May 22nd. In the meantime, how are you feeling about the whole situation? It must have been a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, of course, uh, ups and downs, and lots of uh, lots of things going on through through my head, through my wife's head, and trying to figure everything out. Where we're at, where we stand, what are we gonna do? What's next? All that stuff that uh, it comes with uh, switching a, a career, right? Switching a career is very important. Because it can, you know, I mean, no, you you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. So I could have. This could be a great decision that I'm going to, that I'm going to love, or this could be a decision that I'm going to regret. But you don't know until you give it a shot. You have to keep trying. You have to keep going. And I believe that I'm in good company. So why not keep going, right? Like I said, I already have tenure there. And uh, I really like that place. It's just there's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. And I believe that the changes are coming and I'm excited about it. That's a great attitude to have. It's important to take risks and try new things even if there's a chance of regret. You never know what opportunities might come your way or what you might learn from the experience. And it sounds like you have a lot of faith in the company and its potential for positive change. I'm sure your experience and tenure will be a valuable asset in helping to make those changes happen. I'm excited for you and can't wait to hear how it all goes. Thank you, Artificial Intelligence. That being said, so this weekend was a pretty good one. And, you know, I have I complained about this before. But uh, when I go to a restaurant and when we go somewhere, we go to a restaurant and you sit down, right? And the, the waiter comes up to you and they, uh, they ask for the order and all this. Usually, most of the time, they get it right. They have no problem. We have no problem with them. But this time, this was not the first time from the same person because we go to this place a lot that uh, this person was either it's new or has never been a waitress ever. And uh, we had a hard time just trying to get everything right. I mean, everything was off. The, the forget she'll forget our food. She'll forget the order. She'll forget to bring us drinks. And first, my wife and ordered a drink for her and the baby. And I was in the restroom. I come back. The lady comes back and says, "Okay, are you guys ready to order?" And it's like, "Well, obviously, you didn't see me sitting down." So, and the menus are still on top of the counter. And I'm, I'm not even looking at the menu. I just sat down, and I have no drink. 
And then she's like, I'll give you a few minutes. And she walks away. She still did not ask for if I wanted a drink. She just walked away. And my wife goes, are you kidding me? Like, what the heck is going on? Like, she didn't even ask you for a drink. And I was like, yeah. And she didn't order me anything because I usually get uh, some weird beer, some IPAs and stuff like that. And uh, she does. She she was like, I don't know what they what you would have here because the menu for the beer is like printed on the wall, so it's different. It's not on, on the actual, on the actual uh, on the menu. So we ordered. We're like, okay, let's let's figure out what we're gonna eat. And when she comes back around, we'll order the food, and uh, we'll I'll order the beer. No big deal. So she comes back around. We order the pizza, and uh, I order a beer, and she totally forgets about the beer. So then I'm like, okay, hey. Like, hello, excuse me, um, uh, my beer, I still haven't gotten my beer. Okay, this is 30 minutes already in, sitting down in a restaurant, and it was like, I, this is unbelievable. I can't believe, we've never had a, a problem like that at this place. So the beer finally comes in, the pizza comes in, and we're eating, and we're not even done eating, and she's all like, you guys, are you guys ready to, to go? I can bring you the check. And it's like, we are in the middle of eating the damn pizza, and I don't even have, I maybe took a couple sips off my beer. That to me is is not good waitressing. I completely understand where you're coming from. It's definitely not good service to rush customers out before they are finished with their meal, especially if they've already had a negative experience with the service. It's important for wait staff to be attentive to customers' needs and make sure that they are having a positive experience throughout their meal. I'm sorry that you had to deal with such poor service. But I hope that you were still able to enjoy your meal and the time spent with your wife. Well, we did enjoy the meal, and uh, it was it was good. But we decided to take some friends with us this weekend, and uh, we sat down and we were hoping that we didn't get this person, and we did. So what happened? The same thing happened. She would forget about our orders. She would forget about our drinks, and our friends are like, "Are you kidding me? What kind of service is this?" And uh, so we told our friends, it's like, this happened to us a couple of weeks ago when we came up here. It was the same person. Like, she'll forget all your drinks. She'll forget the order. She'll get the wrong order on the pizza. Then it happens constantly. So this happened back to back, right? And we were we were, we were were kind of upset because we we're just trying to hang out with our friends. We haven't seen them in a long time. And this stuff like this happens. And, and you know, I mean, it's... It's not good, right? You have to pay attention. You have to have some. Uh, I believe there's there's got to be an, uh, a thing where you come around and you check on them and you kind of see where they're at and you, you see if they need a drink or nothing. I mean, everybody ordered a drink and then I ordered my drink and the drink will still not come. And this happened the same like like last time. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Either this lady doesn't like me or I mean, I don't. We really don't even know this person. So then finally, my friends. My buddy's wife uh, waves her down and goes, excuse me, you still haven't brought him his beer. And we're like almost done with ours. Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm going to go get it right now. She finally brings him that beer. My buddy is done with his beer. He's like, can I have another one? She forgets his beer. So then the pizza comes in. Well, the first pizza is completely wrong. So we don't say anything else. The second pizza is completely wrong again. So we were just like, let's just eat the pizza and let's enjoy our time. So then we order some chicken wings, and they have some wood fire wings. They're really delicious. We order two orders of that, and they're still wrong. So it was, I mean, she brought one, and then she's like, oh, how was the chicken? How was the chicken wings? And I go, we're still waiting for another order. And this was like 45 minutes later. Oh, they haven't brought it to you? And it's like, we were like, well, you're the waitress. You know what I mean? Like, who else is going to bring it to us? It's not like we can go get it from the kitchen, right? So that's what we were thinking. So then it's like, oh, I'll have it right out. So then she comes back and she's like, oh, it's coming right out. And it's like, dude, we already like ate almost all the food. We are down. To, I'm down to almost my second beer and the wings are still not out. It was just, it was, it was a mess. And my wife was upset because this already happened to us once. And my wife used to wait. She used to be a waitress back in the day when she was young. So she understands what, you know, how hard it is and, and what you need to do uh, at to serve, right? To to do a good job. And she's like, I mean, I can't believe that this person, nobody tells them anything. So we didn't complain to the manager. We're not those kinds of people. But my friend's wife and my wife were already upset. And we were just like, you know what? Just don't say anything. Everything's going to be fine. And let's just eat. We were having, then we started having a good time. We were having a good time anyways. But it was just, it was incredible that 
she was running around and she could not get one order right. It was it was incredible. Wow. That sounds like a really frustrating experience. It's really disappointing when service is so poor that it detracts from the experience of spending time with friends and enjoying a meal. It's definitely important for wait staff to be attentive to customers' needs and make sure that they are having a positive experience throughout their meal. I'm sorry that you had to deal with such poor service, but I'm glad to hear that you were still able to enjoy the time spent with your friends despite the issues. Have you considered leaving a review or speaking to the manager about the problems you faced? It might be helpful for the restaurant to know about the issues so that they can work to improve in the future. Yeah, and artificial intelligence, you have you are the sense of you are the you are the you're the sense of how would you call that? You're the voice of reason in this show. So it's great to have you on the show. But uh, no, we just uh, we go there so much that we don't want to be looked at like we like, you know, all oh, these people are upset and we don't want anything for free. We don't want to get a discount. We don't want any of that stuff. We don't want to cause any, we don't want this person to get fired. Maybe she didn't used to do this before. It's obvious that she she must be new to this kind of, of job, this career. And uh, we don't want to do anything where it's going to have her get fired. Or maybe she's already had a bunch of complaints and it just takes hours to get her fired. And we definitely don't want to do that, right? We're not we're not bad people. We do the best and, and we try the best to keep cool. You know, the third time, maybe if we go back again and we get her again, the third time, we're I'm going to have to speak to the manager or somebody and be like, hey, we don't want to get this person in trouble. It's just she's always getting our order wrong. This is not the first or second time. This is the third time. So we're we're going to give it another chance uh, because they know that we're there all the time. And that's what I mean is we don't want people looking looking at us like these people complain. And then next time we go, they're going to be like, oh, my God, I don't want to help them because it'll be those, those people complain all the time. And it's like we don't complain about anything. We give good tips and uh, we're uh, – we're pretty good to 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 our waiters waitresses because we know that it's still a tough job, and we were like, well, maybe it's because it's busy. My friends were like, maybe because it's busy today, and it's like, no, the last time we were here, it was not busy at all. There was like six people, and uh, it was the same thing. But it's just maybe she's just not good at it, and maybe she needs to take notes, writes the stuff down like usually some other places do. I mean, she's trying to do it off of memory, and it's like that. You're not gonna be remember everything when you have a bunch of tables. It's just make made no sense to me but um you know if you're a, if you're a waiter if you're a waitress um this is important because you have to make sure you pay attention because you can change you can totally change the day for those people that are visiting that restaurant and vice versa if you are a a customer right if you're walking in to eat don't be rude because you can totally change the day of the waiter or waitress and you can change your day around and make it shitty right and if if they're, you're fighting with them, then they're like, oh, my God, they're not going to tip me. I'm not going to get any money. And their service just completely decreases by a lot. Right. And it's not something that is not something that you want in e- either party. So that's why I always try to be respectful to one another and always just make sure you're like, hey, excuse me, like this and that. And maybe they get it right. But we're still we're super lenient when it comes to this kinds of stuff, because we don't want to cause any harm. And we don't maybe she's having a bad day. Maybe she's been having a couple of bad, rough weeks. And we just don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And we, I know that we should say something so she can do her job a lot better. But, you know, we feel like we, like I said, we go there a lot and, and we just don't want to get somebody in trouble or somebody fired. But next time I will have to have a peaceful conversation with the owner or the, or the manager of the restaurant and uh, just explain to them what's going on. And maybe they can help her out a little bit. Maybe, she, like I said, she can write stuff down and all that stuff. But other than that, it was uh, it was a good time. It was much needed uh, rest from work. And uh, Monday, I go back to my normal job, and I'm there till May 22nd, and then I transfer over to the new position, and and that's going to be great. But we just kind of wanted to take some a little bit of time off so we can because it was tiring, right? Having to, to go through all this stuff and the it it, it just beats up your mind, right? So going hiking and doing all kinds of things like that, like that's what we do. It helps us clear our mind from all the the stress because it's stressful, right? Because it's not like I'm 19 years old or 16 years old, 18 years old, not 16. I don't know if you could work at 16, but when I was 19, 20, 23, 26, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not the same, you know, where I can just go from job to job. Like this is my career and, you know, I have a family and all that and I'm kind of getting older. So it's, 
I can't just be jumping from job to job. I have to make sure I take the right decision. So it's stressful, right? It's stressful because we don't know the future. And uh, that's, that's something that's very, very hard. I can definitely understand how stressful it can be to make decisions about your career and future, especially when you have a family to support. It's important to take the time to weigh your options and make the best decision for yourself and your family. It's okay to feel uncertain about the future, but it's important to remember that you have the skills and experience to succeed in whatever you choose to do. It's also important to have a support system, like friends and family, to help you through these difficult decisions. Have you talked with anyone about your career decisions and what you want to do in the future? Yeah, I mean, that's something that I spoke to my wife about, and uh, we're we're pretty, we, we already know which way we're going to be going. So, you know, hopefully it works out for us. It's going to work out for us. We are really positive about this, uh, this decision that we took and uh, it's, we feel it's going to be great and it's going to help us out a lot, help our family out a lot. So that's, uh, that's what we can do. Like I said, be positive, stay strong and keep going. And uh, you know, with that, that being said, um, you know, sometimes there is, there is times where you're going to take a decision and one door closes, one door opens, but then the old door opens right back up because you're valuable at that place. And that's kind of what I felt, right? One door opened and I was on my way out to the next to the next career opportunity. And then all of a sudden it was like the other door didn't close all the way and they reopened the door and brought me back. And it happens, right? It happens. It's just... That's just the way life is. That's the way life works when you're valuable at a place and, and, and they love you there and they tell you that you're part of the family. It's uh, it's special, right? It's special and that right there is completely worth it to keep going, going to uh, keep, keep working hard to stay, uh, to stay with them and, and try to make, uh, you know, try to have, try to make everything happen, right? For the company and, and succeed together, right? Because if the company doesn't succeed, you don't succeed and, you know, you have to work hard for the company to succeed so the company can give you raises and, and have more opportunities for the future and all that stuff. So it, it works together, right? We have, you have to have good employees. You have to have good managers. You have to have good, uh, good owners and all that stuff in order for the company to be a great company. So hopefully we get there. And um, if you're out there going through the same thing, trying to figure out careers and jobs and what you're wanting to do in life, and if you're on the, on, on the way out, from your old job to get a new job, think about it. You know, always make sure you talk to the right person, have an exit interview, make sure you tell them why you're leaving, why it's, that's very important that you tell them, I would like to have an exit interview before I leave. And it's, it's something that's very important because you tell them why you're leaving. And this is uh, the problems that I see and this and that. And if you're valuable to the company and you've been a good employee, good worker, hard worker, they're going to listen to you. Right. And if you're, then, like I said, if you're valuable, they're going to try to do their best to keep you because you are, worth more than anything to them and you just make the company better so think about it stay strong keep going be positive until next time peace thanks for checking out bold talk by joe podcast we want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world you can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe.